The parents of a journalist killed by ISIS are speaking out about their son's death in their very first TV interview. Stephen Sotloff was the second American killed by the extremist group. He was kidnapped in August 2013, shortly after entering Syria. <clears throat> Sotloff's family spoke to Leslie Stahl for this Sunday, 60 Minutes. They discussed the last time they spoke to him and their frustrations with the U.S. government's no-ransom policy. I am Stephen Joel Sotloff. I'm sure you know exactly who I am by now and why I am appearing before you. Stephen Joel Sotloff was beheaded by ISIS. His execution on September 2nd, 2014 was seen around the world on a video. Did you ever watch it? I have viewed um, Stephen's body with his head on his chest. I had to see that because I needed to be sure that that was him. Stephen was born and raised in Miami, attended college in Israel, and became a freelance journalist reporting from war zones where information was scarce, like Yemen, Benghazi, Libya, and Syria, where he went in the summer of 2013. Just before he crossed into Aleppo, he called his dad. He contacted me and told me not to worry, and but if I don't hear from him within four days, that I should get in touch with one of his colleagues. Ooh, that's uh, ominous. He didn't hear from his son, not just for four days, it was four excruciating months. Then finally, they got a ransom letter Stephen with Joe demands Salah for the government to free US. all the Muslims in U.S. custody. Then there's a last option. A hundred million euros will secure Stephen's release. Which is something like a hundred and thirty-seven million dollars. What was your reaction? The reaction well, was, how the hell are we going to get right. this money together? They thought the U.S. government would help them, but they were bewildered and then infuriated when they say they met a stone wall, the U.S. policy forbidding the paying of ransom. All right, Leslie Stoll is with us now and joins us at the table. It's so chilling, Leslie, to hear the parents say, we saw his body with his head on top oh, of the body. Yeah. I can't imagine what that must be like for the it, parents. What? It was it was even horrible to have to ask to have to ask them yes. to yeah. kind of relive What was this. your reaction when they saw that the U.S. would not pay for the ransom? Well, anger, yeah. naturally. Uh, they were told that if they did raise money, or they could be prosecuted, and anyone who gave them money could be prosecuted. They felt they were threatened. Uh, they went out to try and raise the money themselves, but. Mm -hmm. uh, one, they were afraid the government would come after them, and two, I mean, how are they going to raise that much money? So how has the policy been changed? Well, the government now has a policy of not prosecuting, uh, and they coordinate more with the, with the families, but they still do not pay ransom as a government. But does do that most mean if governments pay ransom? A lot of governments yeah. do, I yeah. assume. A lot of the European, the United Kingdom doesn't, but most European governments do. And what was so horrible in this situation is that Stephen was in a room with a, all the other Western hostages, and they watched the others be set free because mm. their governments paid, paid and paid very little. You know, in one case, I have a cheat sheet here. I think it was Spain only paid $7 million, so they were able to negotiate it way down. And then the, the Americans just sat there and watched the room. Does Israel pay ransom? That I don't know. Yeah. But, I, but explain, I think, because the U.S. has been clear about this, about not paying Very ransom. Clear. And, and the reason is because they believe, the U.S., our, our government believes, that it would encourage them to capture, to take more hostages. That's the theory. Also, that it would fund terrorists. Right. to bomb and so forth. So there's two parts to the reason. But on the, the, there's a new study that says that, uh, it, it says that terrorists take Westerners as targets of opportunity. They don't know if they're American. They don't know mm -hmm. if they're Spanish. They don't know if their governments pay ransom or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the study says that, that, that it refutes this theory, that if you pay ransom, um, your fueling, the are, taking of more. Yeah. Are they totally convinced that if the ransom had been paid that Stephen would have been freed? Do they, they believe that yes, that would be the case? Yes, they believe that because they watched what happened to the, to Europeans. the others. Yeah, that's tough.
very Thank you, calm. Liz. Yeah. It's chilling yeah. and it's powerful. And I mean, these, these families now, by giving interviews, are working to change this policy right. because they believe it so fervently. All right. And thank you very much, Leslie. You can see Leslie's full report Sunday on 60 Minutes, including the assistant to the president for counterterrorism, who says some White House officials feel that they failed the families of hostages. That's Sunday night right here on CBS.